Are you on weed? Give me some, I'll smoke you two under the table. All right. Well, for the joint report, where the hell are my notes? Here we go. Um, Ollie, since uh, you're a fellow uh, enjoyer of cannabis and cannabis products, I got three uh, articles for you. The first one I wanted to bring up, uh, and these articles I found on internationalhighlife.com. Uh, cannabis myths. Does holding in your the hit in your lungs get you higher? What do you think? Um, I'm willing to bet that it makes me feel higher. Yeah, <laughs> breath and shit. That's a that's a cool answer. There is there is that widespread kind of uh, they're calling it a myth in this one uh, <laughs> that states that the longer you hold in a hit from a joint or a bowl, the higher you'll get. But there's uh, there's another piece of cannabis community wisdom that's been doing the rounds for almost just as long as that myth has been going on. And um, pretty much what that and science is telling us is that you're not necessarily feeling higher, but probably a little lightheaded because what you're doing essentially when you're doing this is you're just holding in carbon monoxide. That's all it is. And the, the capillaries are out. What do you call those things in your lungs? It's not capillaries. It's the, the little uh, tree looking cauliflower the, uh, looking things. Your bronchioles. Areolas. Areolas? <laughs> uh, the, the, the little cauliflower looking things that suck up everything Aviolae. that goes in. Whatever. That's what it is. Uh, those, they, they get the THC that you're going to get in a matter of like a fraction of a second. So if for those who are being made fun of for taking the little bitch hits, it's not a bad idea because <laughs> that'll get you just as high as taking a, you know, a normal hit. Pretty much what you're doing when you're uh, taking little bitch hits is that you're taking more than two, and the rule is no more than two puffs. Uh, we all know these people, right? Right. But uh, but anyway, what what they're saying is that significantly more carbon uh, monoxide is absorbed from uh, from the smoke and after 20 seconds of breath holding. Effects of marijuana on mood are not consistently affected by breath hold duration. The results confirm previous findings that a prolonged breath holding does not substantially enhance the effects of inhaled marijuana smoke. And on the flip side of this, we're talking about smoke, but they also go into inhaling vapor. So when you're vaping, because the vapor doesn't contain any carcinogens or any other chemicals that come from, you know, actually lighting something on fire and then inhaling it. It's actually more beneficial to you. And while there aren't any significant, uh, like peer reviewed papers on this yet, um, there is evidence to at least have the hypothesis that if you hold in vapor longer, that may make you more high because you're actually getting more uh, cannabinoids in that vapor rather than all the other carcinogens that you would if you're smoking something that's all that's been on fire. So there's that. Um, we'll try this out and we'll report soon enough. Hmm. And uh, the next one that I had was, uh, let's see here. Have you ever put a coin in your grinder, Ollie, so that it can gather keef? Or, or are, are you somebody who collects keef from now, from every now and then? No, no. You're not one of those uh, keef collectors? Too much effort for me, no. There's, um, there's a specific breed of cat, and I don't disagree or agree with them. Uh, but there's there's guys who's just like nah we don't collect keef I mean if 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 we're gonna smoke it we're gonna smoke it now like whatever gets grounded up let's just have it now you know there's no reason to to farm keef to have later I mean and, and and for those who do and I'm one of them uh, actually could go either way I don't really care but that's just the the grinders that I have have a third compartment that collects the keef and um you know it's nice every now and then to shovel some of that keef out and put it at the top of your bowl or, or put it in your in your joint that you're rolling but um for this article for those who do save keef um they this article talks about putting a coin into that grinder so there's three compartments to this particular kind of grinder where the first one is where you put the flat the the bud in the second one after it gets ground that's where the the grounded up bud goes and the third compartment is where it's uh, the keef is sifted through and then that's where that lands so the reason for this uh, for this process is so that the coin can collect the keef a little bit more um, more efficiently 
So what they're saying is that put a coin in your grinder, uh, up your Keef game with this one simple trick. Unlike other weed hacks, it won't break the bank and it doesn't require much tinkering or DIY know-how. So step one is the grinder. Grab a relatively large three-chamber grinder. It can already be uh, caked full of Keef or brand, or it could be brand spanking new. If you want to see the full effect, we recommend cleaning it out first, obviously. Uh, so grind your weed as you would under normal circumstances. The more, the merrier. It will continue to add more Keef into the collection chamber at the very bottom. And then it wants you to freeze it. Open up your grinder's second chamber where we all perfectly, where we, where we have the perfectly ground weed, uh, and then place a coin in the center. A penny or nickel is the right size and weight. Screw the grinder back together and place it in the freezer for 20 to 30 minutes. And then uh, step three is shake it. Once the grinder, once the grinder and its full contents are chilled, remove it from the freezer. Shake the grinder vigorously for a few seconds. You can also slide the grinder back and forth across the table if your grinder happens to have a magnet on the inside. This method ensures ensures that the penny doesn't merely stick the magnet, but instead agitates the weed. And then uh, the last one is the Keef step. Open up the third chamber of the grinder and you'll quickly realize the power of putting a coin inside your grinder. More Keef than ever before will have collected nicely in the collection chamber. Even with one quick grind, you'll notice a significant amount of Keef starts to build. Use a small Keef spatula that came with your grinder to, to remove it from the collection chamber. A guitar pick makes a perfect alternative if you've misplaced the tiny little tool. So um, this is something that I probably uh, I'm probably just going to try it to see how it works. Uh, I've never done anything like this before, but I think that really it doesn't have to be any particular kind of coin as long as it's one that would fit in there. But the fact that it doesn't go into the third chamber with the Keef, I thought was which I think a lot of people think to do is because the metal will attract the Keef to it rather than it just kind of being spilled out and sprawled out about. Um, if you put it in the second chamber where pretty much the business part of the, of the, of the grinder, where everything gets ground up, that's where it'll agitate the weed enough where it'll just fall all the way through. Um, I hope that made sense. But anyway, try it, everybody. Just let us know what happens. The freezing thing is what's kind of weird, right? Well, cause I think it makes it crumblier when it's frozen or chilled just like with any other plant. You know what I mean? Anyway. Yeah. Um, lastly, Ollie, are you a person who has found themselves desperate enough to smoke the resin off of their bowl? Yes. I think we all have been there, man. Yes. Um, now this article talks about, is it bad for your health? And I can't say it's can't say it's great because essentially this is the tar buildup, right? This is the tar buildup of the weed that you've smoked throughout the course of the last. Uh, I don't know if you're Ollie, maybe the last decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you famously don't clean your bongs, right? I think you've said it before. Just toss them away. Just toss them away. <laughs> Make sure they break at a party and blame the guy. Yeah. <laughs> so you owe me a new bong, bro. <laughs> Um, but let's see here. You've run out of bud, smoked all your roaches, and you're dying for a buzz, but your stash is dry. Sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures, and this is where the weed resin comes in. And we've all been there. The weed resin is caked on the, is, is the caked on leftovers that show up in your pipe after multiple uses. It's the tar-like substance that sometimes sticks to your lips when you smoke a joint. The stuff that sometimes clogs up your pipe. It's the plant's defense mechanism. It's the response of being broken up and heated. Some strains produce more resin than others. So the question, is it safe to smoke weed resin? The short answer is yes. You can smoke resin and it will get you high, but it's not all that good for you for your health. The resin is essentially tar, and as we know, tar is not good for you. It's one of the most harmful byproducts of inhaled substances. Despite this, taking a little hoot off of your resin won't kill you. Uh, the THC will all already have been activated through the initial smoke, so it won't be as strong, but you might need to smoke quite a bit of the resin to feel as high as you're used to. 
Uh, a resin high may feel a little different than your initial flower high, but make no mistake, if you're in a buzz needing bind, it's, it's going to scratch your itch. So how do you smoke your resin? Huh? Uh, some people just really put the flame on that empty bowl and really just inhale until they get that buzz. Which is, I think is the most dangerous part, right? Like you're, you're all that butane you're just like inhaling it's more butane because you get that butane yeah. flavor when you're doing that yeah so that's that's why i was like that's gotta be bad but is that as bad as the cat who scrapes it off of that bowl like the edges of the bowl puts it into like a little ball almost and then puts it back in there and smokes it because now you're getting more surface area of this tar what yeah, do you think some experiments who knows no, you've done it though. Have you done both ways? Have you scraped? Yeah, yeah, it I've done both ways. I'm just saying, I don't know which one would be more more dangerous. Yeah, I would argue that the uh, when when you scrape it off and and then you know combust that ball of gunk, that's probably worse because worse. there's more you know stuff that your body doesn't need, and and you, now now you're just doing more and more of a surface area to that. But um, I mean, it's it's the same thing. It's just you're doing one's more hardcore than the other i think and i think that at this point the butane is not as bad as the tar that now you're reigniting and introducing in your lungs <laughs> but that's know. just me just Dad. don't <laughs> don't right <laughs> or, or just don't yeah there you go uh, but again, if you're in a bind, just think twice, man. Uh, it maybe- does come in clutch, though, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. But uh, anyway, that's all I had for the joint report uh, this week. Uh, I'll try to have another one next week or not. I don't know. We have uh, Mark Maples on next week, for, and, and I think there's going to be a whole lot of sports to talk about. So that's going to be an interesting episode. Uh, so everybody stick around for music highlights. We'll be right back. Smoke weed every day. Well, keeping up with this tradition that we just uh, started here on the old Fubar show, um, we gave each other one song to pick from pop, rock, and hip hop. And let's see, I think, well, seeing that Josh is in here, he still sent the song in, and he was assigned pop for this week. And the pop song that he sent us was by an artist called Glass Animals off of his album called Dreamland. This song is Heat Waves. I can listen to this entire album all, you know, all freaking day long. Let's do it. <laughs> Have you listened to the London Calling uh, album there, Ollie? Yeah, I'm a huge Clash fan, yeah, for sure. Dude, one of the best albums written. Uh, it goes up there, man. Like that, And that's why these these guys are definitely in my top 10. I don't know where I'd put them. I haven't thought about it in a while, but goddamn, dude, the Clash has done no wrong. And a lot of hip hop has borrowed these beats, too, uh, throughout the years. You just reminded me that tonight, February 12th, mm-hmm. this probably is not going to matter, <laughs> but mm-hmm. um, my friend's band, uh, Cheap Cheese, is playing at Alex's Bar in Long Beach. Okay. And they're nice. very much similar like that. They have uh, the drums and the trumpets and all that. So it's a really cool band. Yeah. Oh, sick. I yeah. wish I could go, but I can't because they got Rona. <laughs> hey. Are they going to live stream that or what? <laughs> 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 Likely not. Uh, Alex, have you ever been to Alex's bar? No. <laughs> you don't want to live stream that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it for the music highlights. And uh, that's going to do it for the episode, man. Uh, is there something that you wanted to, uh, before before we end the episode here, Ollie? You wanted to promote? Again, you know, my mind's on the Super Bowl, so uh, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Bitch Please 2. <laughs> hope they make that shit happen uh-huh yeah. and uh yeah we'll see okay well may the best rams win <laughs> um <laughs> good luck to you guys sir good luck yeah good luck to your uh bangles my 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 uh my your team's choice. at home fishing so it's you, all good okay all right are you, are you gonna put down some money for this uh i'll probably i'll probably find some suckers yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
All right. And, you know, <laughs> no, it's just barbecuing, man. I'm going to make some mojos and burgers and all that fun stuff. So it should be cool. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Um, I was supposed to be recording with the band, but, you know, I, I can't I can't do that anymore because because I got the Rona. I mean, so. we'll be outdoors. So if you want to come by. <laughs> no, dude, no, we're not subjecting your family to Rona again. <laughs> <laughs> keep your mask on, bro. It'll be all right. No, nah, fuck that. Uh, no, we're fine right here, dude. Yeah, you know, you haven't been over. You need to come over and uh, have you seen my uh, projector that I installed here at uh, Filthy you Martini? Had, you had it installed. You hadn't had anything connected yet. You were, you were waiting for your sound or something like that. Right. So I I, uh, I crawled in, into my attic and it finally installed um, the surround sound system. And I, we've had it for now, what, two or three months? Yeah. So Fucking Rona, bro. I mean, you know, January was just... Yeah, and now you. Well, have we'll have a movie night one of these days, years. man, and um, yeah, yeah sure. we'll come over. It's it's pretty badass. So I, my my one hundred watt fucking subwoofer really makes the house shake. Yeah, it scares the dog. <laughs> it scares the dog. <laughs> <laughs> but that's gonna do it for uh, episode two hundred and sixty two. Ollie, once again, thank you for being on, and uh, and yeah, man. Thank until next guys. time, next week, everybody, uh, uh, tune in. It's gonna Josh is back on the on the show. And we've invited back uh, an old friend, uh, Mark Maples. He's gonna the the guy was uh, um, he had his own kind of internet radio at one point with Chaotic Radio. A uh, real fun guy to just talk to. Um, so everybody tune in for that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Thank y'all very much for listening into the Foo Bar Show. Remember to hit subscribe and be sure to rate, review, and tell a friend like a freaking champion. You can also listen in and get our swag at foobarshow.com. That's f o bar show.com. And follow f o bar show on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Join in, drop us a line, and we'll fill it up like a couple of foos. Ah! I've been Josie. And Steph. And for Ollie G. Baby Luna. Signing off saying do